Hi guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and all things creative. I'm Jacqueline and I'm an interior architect and designer here at DNB. In today's video, I want to talk about how to create an interior design mood board. I want to show you guys the exact design mood board process that I use on every project and also some tips that I think could be really useful for when you make your own. So if you want to know how to create a professional mood board, let's jump into the video. I really like mood boards because I think that by visually showing your idea to the client, you're instantly able to give a sense of what you're going to create. So what types of mood boards are there? I usually include three different types when I'm designing a project. The first is an atmospheric mood board, which are sometimes called conceptual mood boards or master mood boards. I show this to my clients to one, give them an idea of what my design concept is, and two, to get them excited about the project. The main point of this mood board is to just show them my inspiration for my design concept and also to give them a sense of what atmosphere I'm trying to create for them. I want the images to evoke how they're going to feel in the space. Are they going to be relaxed? Are they going to be excited or energized? Or will they feel glamorous? So this mood board is really trying to just give off a sense of excitement and emotions to the client. The second mood board is just what I like to call the interior mood board, which is where I include the nitty gritty parts of the interior. So what kind of furniture there'll be, what kind of lighting, fixtures, and even some materials as well. Although I showed this one to the clients too, they much prefer the previous mood board because they can see the final look in those ones, whereas this one they can't. But it's still important to have so that I know what the space is going to look like and what pieces are going to be in there as well. And the last mood board I put together is a material mood board, which yeah, is probably the least interesting to look at, but it's really important to see how your materials look in person compared to when you bought them online, because sometimes they are completely different from the way they look on the internet. And usually I create one for each room I'm designing on a project. Now, a lot of the time I see people debating which software is best to create a mood board. Should you make one in Canva? Should you make one in PowerPoint? Should you make one in InDesign? Should you make one in Photoshop? Honestly, there's so many ones. Well, in my personal experience, it's actually harder to create a mood board on Canva, PowerPoint or Photoshop. I've tried all three and I honestly find them harder. So the one I personally use is InDesign. I think a lot of people might find Adobe InDesign quite daunting to use because not a lot of people use it compared to the amount of people that use Photoshop anyway. But honestly, after trying it, I definitely think that it's easier to use than Photoshop. Looking back, I also realized that it was just so fiddly to place images into PowerPoint and it would just take me so long to create them in there as well. And in Photoshop, getting everything to look neat and getting all the images to look the exact shape I wanted just took such a long time. Also, what's really important to remember is that if you save out a document with lots and lots of images out in Photoshop, it's always going to have a huge file size compared to if you saved it out in InDesign. So that's something to definitely think about. If you're not meeting in person, you're probably sending it across to a client online and that would be near impossible if you saved out your huge file or PDF in Photoshop because the file size is huge. But honestly, don't worry if you're not sure how to create a mood board in InDesign because I'm going to clear it all up for you. And trust me when I say it is actually easy. So the first step in my mood board process is to generate some ideas, obviously. Before I start to place images all together and make everything look all fancy, I need to gather some inspiration. And the way I like to do this is by simply creating a Pinterest board and start saving images. This is not a sponsored video, I wish it was, but I really do recommend using Pinterest to save all your ideas together because it's the easiest way to gather them all in one place. And if you want to find something that's really unusual that Pinterest might not have, what I like to do is I simply type it into Google, then use the Pinterest Chrome extension button and then add the image to my Pinterest board. It's really useful if you can't find a certain image you're looking for on Pinterest, so that's a quick tip. I also find that what really helps me to get a clearer picture of what images I want to go on the mood board is to just write a small paragraph explaining the design concept. And I also describe how I want the space to feel and also the aesthetics of the space. So when thinking about what images to place, think about those three things. Okay, so the next step in my mood board process is to create the damn thing. Just to give you some context, I'm going to be showing you an atmospheric mood board for a design we did for a beach villa in Mauritius. 
Now, how do we actually create the digital InDesign mood board? Before I go into InDesign, I actually always sketch out a wireframe of the layout. Just so that when I go into InDesign, I don't have to sit there and think about how I want the layout to look because that can be really time consuming. So that's just what I like to do. Once that's done, let's open up Adobe InDesign. First things first, I create a new document and I set up the page size. Usually I go for an A3 size just in case I want to print this out. I like to have an A3 copy as they're easier to see the detail of the images compared to an A4 page. And personally, I like to go for a landscape orientation just so that I can put it into my design presentation document afterwards. Then I simply click on this button, the rectangle frame tool, then click and hold down until I have the shape I want. Simply select it and hold down the Alt button to duplicate the shape. I continue to do this until I have all the boxes I want. And I like to add one circle onto the layout too. And to do that, I just hold down the rectangle frame tool again and select ellipse. I think by now you'll be able to see that it's different from the other programs because usually in those you'll just copy and paste images in. Well, in InDesign you can make sure all the spacing is equal and everything is aligned because you'll see these little distance points show up to tell you that it's evenly distanced. And the green line pops up to tell you that all the lines are in alignment. So now it's the fun part, putting in the images. This is also how it's different from other programs. You have to save the images into your folder and then drag that into the frame rather than copy and pasting like you would in Photoshop. Now, once the image is in the frame, usually it's either too small or way too big for the shape. In which case, I just double click on the image until the orange lines come up on the edges and then hold down shift and scale the image to how I want. Holding down shift, just make sure that the image remains in scale and proportional. And yeah, I just continue to do that until all the frames are filled in. And sometimes I get rid of some images if I don't think that they go with other ones. But yeah, I just play around with it. Once it's done, I like to add some color swatches. So then I select a shape and double click on this square here and simply select a color, which then fills in the shape. And you can click this button here to save that color swatch. And if you want to see the actual beach villa design, it's going to be at the end of this video. So keep on watching. Now, when you're done, you're still going to see there's wireframing on the shapes and even some images that may be blurry because the program is saving processing power so that it can work quickly and not have any lag. So to see how it will really look, hold down this square button here and click presentation. This will show you the final mood board. And to quit this mode, just press escape. Then once I finish and I want to save my mood board, I go to file, export, and usually I save it out as a JPEG because I add my mood boards to another design presentation. But if you want to print it, save it out as a PDF file. And when this screen comes up, make sure that it's high quality print selected. Then that will make sure that it's absolutely perfect quality for printing. I know it might seem like a bit of a hassle to begin with and also time consuming to set up the shapes, but once you've got the layout, you can use the template again and again. Over time, it will become second nature to you. And trust me when I say that it's so much easier and so much quicker than using other programs. So get learning. Now I want to share with you some do's and don'ts when it comes to creating a mood board for interior design. It's 2021. You don't need to be pruned now and sticking so many images onto a bit of foam board because it will waste so much paper. Also, I know that a lot of people like to cut things out of magazines and stick them to, you know, create a kind of collage of images. But if you want to keep things clean and professional looking, I would always say to do things digitally. Another don't is by adding like a big word or a couple of words onto the mood board because I think it can kind of look a bit collage and 
almost like a vision board. Stick to a small paragraph if you need some words there, but remember that the images are the ones that are supposed to be doing the most talking. Make sure that images with small details are large on your page, and the ones with hardly any detailing, you know, they can be smaller. Just to make sure that things are visible still, even if you're far away from the mood board. But don't overthink it, and honestly, have fun. I think a good mood board is one that simply conveys your design vision to the client. If you're new then welcome, on this channel we talk about interior design, architecture, illustration, content creation and graphic design so if any of that interests you make sure to subscribe to see videos just like this one. I hope I gave you guys an insight into my mood board process and also how you guys can create a professional mood board too. Leave me a picture frame emoji below so that I know that you enjoyed this video and learned something new. And of course if you like this video then please give it a big thumbs up because by doing that you really really do help our channel. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!